to be people by the Christmas tree until I was grown. As children, we would go to our grandparents on a Sunday in December, and along with other relatives, we would take an axe and head to the woods on my granddaddy's 72 acre farm to cut down the most perfect cedar trees we could find. We would also pull up running cedar, shoot mistletoe from the trees, and break holly boughs by our other decorations. Daddy would cut off part of the cedar tree trunk and shake a log, put three holes in the top, and shellac it. That is what we used to hold our candles, placing the running cedar around the greenery. Grandma would take her tree back to the house and make a paste of water and flour, which we rubbed on the cedar branches to represent snow. There were no lights to be found on Grandma's tree, just dozens of shiny glass balls, heavy red rope, and tons of silver icicles, the kind that break the branches when you threw them on. After Grandma's tree was decorated, Daddy would put our tree in the trunk and haul it home. Our tree had lights, those big, shiny, brightly colored lights, and the tube lights that followed. Mama always put the finishing touch on our cedar tree because she worried that the angel hair she so lovingly spread across its branches was very itchy and would cut our young skin. When she finished and turned the lights on, they shone through the angel hair like a halo lit. We just knew we had the prettiest Christmas tree anywhere. On Christmas Eve, we'd all gather at Grandma and Granddaddy's for a big supper. After this, we kids were so excited we could hardly be contained. We would push the old kitchen table against the wall to make room for all of us to gather near the tree and sing a few Christmas songs before Granddaddy turned into Santa and began passing out the gifts. Everyone would get two, one from the person who drew his name and the other from Grandma and Granddaddy. Even though they were not rich, they managed to buy a gift for all the children, grandchildren, and in-laws. It was the love and warmth of the season that made that one dollar gift so special. Everyone got individual attention as we opened gifts, one by one, no matter how long it took. The men in the family usually had a special gift for their wives. It was the one time of the year that this spurred to look to buy something big for the household. Each year, one of the women would get a pigtail. Country folks raised pigs for food. And once the animals were slaughtered and processed into chops, ham, sausages, bacon, and lard, just about the only thing left was the tail, and this was saved for Christmas, when it would be wrapped in shiny paper in a bag. The pigtail wasn't a real present, of course. There was always a note saying they needed to go to the pack house, where tobacco was ready to go to the market, or to the barn to find their gift. Me and Mama got her pigtail, we were all excited. When she got back from the pack house, we were even more excited because Daddy had given her a black and white TV that year. I remember well. It was the year I was 12 years old, and that was a very special gift for Mama and to us kids. No matter how long the gift exchange took, it was over too soon. After that, Grand Daddy and my Uncle Pat would get the fiddle and banjo down and play Christmas music. One of their favorite songs was an old bluegrass classic, Christmas Times Are Coming. Snowflakes are falling, my old hearts are calling. Tall pines are humming, Christmas times are coming. Even now, so many years later, hearing those words takes me back to Christmases long ago, and I'm reminded that once again, Christmas times are coming, and I know I'm going home.